Is this thing on? Is this on? Okay. So it says Poopster in the thing. So Prince. Hey, 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 hey. Okay. It's fixed. (laughs) Don't don't get caught up on these semantics, my friend. (laughs) We're just, you know, hey, this is new. You know, come on here. All right. Anyways, hi. It is your friend Prince with a T S <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> and we're here in the future, twenty twenty, the start of a new decade. And Poopster has left the building. I and kicked him out. Yes, uh kicked him out. He's gone. <laughs> He, he's he's now having he sex with his wife he, as we speak. He pooped on me. He pooped on Zipix. So now it's the power hour with Prince and Zipix. And I said my name both times. And also Rotten Socks are my 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 lover. No. Oh, come on, nobody loves you. Everybody <laughs> loves fucking rotten socks, okay? No, I met I met you, Prince. No, nobody loves me. That's okay. Uh, rotten, you've got some distortion on your mic. Yeah. It sounds like you, you're like on a boat. <laughs> or a rock I? concert. Yeah, like it sounds like you're 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 like <laughs> you on an ocean liner. What's the sound like though? Like it's a like, rock concert. Distortion. No, it's like yeah, it's like you're in the bathroom at a rock concert. No, hear me out on this. Okay. I've always had bad luck with my neighbors. So my, my upstairs neighbor right now is blasting some music. So. <laughs> oh, no <laughs> shit. So you are kind of like a backroom rock concert. Well, we can deal with that. That's okay. Now, now that I know that it's me, not... So. Now that I know that it's not like uh, uh, hardware related. What is he listening to? <laughs> it's still... I don't even know, man. But he blasts all this music all the every day at this time, precisely wow. when I'm supposed to go to bed. Oh <laughs> man, that's gonna suck. It, it sounds like it's got a good beat, though. Um, yeah, no, it's um, not um, that bad. Um, <laughs> I can hear it it's like. Yeah, it, it's definitely noticeable in in the audio, but. It's but so smooth. I get it. It's cool. Now now that I know what it is, I can I can hang. Um, it's not cool. I'm, I'm, I'm quitting. I'm done. Oh, See ya. Zipix, <laughs> it's his first, first show, and he's gonna quit. <laughs> I can't deal with this anymore. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Man. <laughs> well, Anyways. again, uh, what are we talking about tonight? Well, we have a few... Several things to, to touch I, I, on. I think I think we should start with crypto. Well, yes, we we generally start with cryptocurrency. Well, that, that's, that's wait, I don't want to. I don't want to change things too far off for them. Yeah, you don't want to shock people too bad. Culture you shock, know. you know. Yeah, culture shock, exactly. So, I mean, I've got I've got my uh, my chart Penis pulled story. up here. So, man, Bitcoin is under fucking seven k right now. Is it really? Yes. On Binance, anyways, the shit Binance that it is. Right now, it's yeah, it's at six thousand nine hundred seventy-six. Yeah, wow, that's it's, interesting. It's been hanging at like seven seventy-three for like the past week. By now, this is accumulation phase. Anything under seven k accumulation. By now, buy, 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 now. buy, buy high, sell low. No, wait, that's the wrong... (laughs) I don't think that's what you want to do. I think you want to do the (laughs) other way around. So, I'm looking actually at the Ishimoku cloud. And it says we're we're, we're under the cloud right now, but it's promising 
in the fact that it's green as opposed to red. So, um, yes, yes, yes. And the uh, accumulation distribution indicator is hanging right in the middle. And I think it might go north. Well, I don't know about that. I don't know either. I think it might stay the same. It might. I, the, that's fine, though. Rotten? I I think it's going to be uh, lingering with within this sideways range. But once mm. it explodes one way or the other, it's going to be bad either way. Because it's going to be either... Uh, mind blowing 20k 30k let's bring the coke and the molly back in mm -hmm. or <laughs> it's going to go down suicide line uh, drinking chlorine and things as such yes, <laughs> I you know. I come. that's a good point you know I, I I get into random conversations with uber drivers and uh, this la the last one I took home from work uh, I mentioned bitcoin and the guy's like Pulling up on his phone, he's like, "Oh, what price is that?" Like, I'm like, "It's at 72 because I fucking right, know." Right, pulling up on his phone while he's driving. Hmm. Yeah, I'd be like, "Look at the road dip." Yeah, I mean, like, and he's trying to tell me like, "Oh, it might dip down to like 4K." I'm like, "Don't kill me, just drive normally, man." Yeah, but that's not going to happen. Then I then I t I started talking to him about the subsidy having and 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 what that's going to mean to the price, uh, most likely. Uh, at some point in time this year, we're going to hit that subsidy halving. And, and if, if you agree with the principles of economics, when you limit the supply of something and make something more scarce, what happens? It goes down. Oh, come on. Hell, hell no. Uh, he, <laughs> there, there, there is a guy from a quantum research company or something like that from the Netherlands called Plan B. His Twitter handle is at 100 trillion USD, and he has this stock to flow ratio mm. analysis. And according to him, there is allegedly three cases. Uh, the most uh, bullish one states that if by December 2021, not 2020, mm. uh, if Bitcoin is not sitting at 100K each, the the model gets invalid. Oh. The most say bearish or more conservative is fifty five k, and the other is ninety k. So wow. if if you're smart, you're accumulating as much Bitcoin or as the old saying says, stacking sats, which is yeah. fractions of a Bitcoin, all the way down through the halving, which is in May 2020, yes. and hold on to it until December 2021, because if this quantum researcher is right, you're going to be banking. That's actually a good point. Um, yeah. I know the halving is going to be monumental as, as, as to what it's going to do, do to the price eventually. I hadn't really thought that far off as, as, as 2021, but it does make sense because now we're in a lot of a, a different territory than we were in past years. There's there's an in institutional tie-in that we did not have previously. Um, yeah. So it's you know it's highly speculative as to what can happen, and we have a lot of data at this point. But now there's these new heads, there's this new money inside. So that makes sense. I'd like to. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to actually uh, look at his, his analysis actually and see what he's taking t into account for that. Yeah, he's he's just factoring in the fact that let's say the inflation, so to speak, on Bitcoin is going to be reduced every four years, uh, and he's showing what happens after every halving. Right. Uh, and if we follow those patterns with history. Um, it should skyrocket, but it yeah. shouldn't happen like suddenly. Like, okay, it happened in May someday, and boom, 100k. No, it happens progressively. Yeah. See, okay. the, the last halving for Bitcoin, it was interesting because uh, Litecoin halved shortly after that price. So it seemed like, and that was way before institutional adoption. So it seemed like those two halvings 
definitely influenced each other. And we saw, obviously, 22K, et cetera, et cetera, at that point for Bitcoin. Um, but at that point, that was the first real, quote-unquote, moon for Bitcoin. I mean, of course, any moon over something be- before 2012 uh, was significant, but that was the real, the real like exponential gain that we saw. And yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> the mempool got clogged. It was a whole mess. Um, oh, it was. It took people a were a long people were time. going bananas. People were going. Uh, to the bank and maxing their credit cards, uh, refinancing their homes, and of course, right after the peak comes the blow of mm-hmm. pop. Boom! Oh yeah, and there's probably people who will never return to cryptocurrency again after yeah. buying at 20k and then seeing <laughs> seeing it drop so low. But those I those mean, guys, fuck them. I've know. I've crossed paths with people like such and it's a mixed bag Uh, I for a fact know somebody like that and he's still in and he's all in and he even went ahead and cancelled all his 401k and all the the leftover every month he puts it back in bitcoin so well he knows the system he knows what it means yeah uh, yeah We've talked about, I've talked about this previously, like, uh, you know, when I originally got into crypto in 2012, it was for selfish means. It was, it was to make profit, um, you know, behind the computer. Once I got into the system and got into the community, I realized what I was a part of. And I realized how important all of this was. And if you're a smart person, you're going to, you're, you're going to inevitably reach that point. Um, you're not going to drop out just because mm-hmm. shit, I lost money. You know, you realize the importance of, of the blockchain economy and, and, and you follow it. Yep. Well, uh, it's, it's going to be an interesting year for cryptocurrencies for certain. Yeah. Um, it's I think decade. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Do you think and, anything could displace Bitcoin's market dominance right now or no in the next year? I don't know, man. I don't think so because it, it has the seven network effects, as Trace Mayer says. That's an OG in Bitcoin. Um, it has the most institutional adoption, as you yeah. were saying. And I was having this uh, argument with Monero people in those IRC channels recently mm-hmm. because they keep saying, no, but Monero is more than Bitcoin, that Bitcoin is to Bitcoin, and blah, 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 it blah. It doesn't matter, yeah. yeah. It's and valid, that, but it, it lacks the volume, it lacks the liquidity, exactly. it lacks the actual use case. Uh, and I even went ahead and said, yeah, Monero is private, it's fungible, it's more Bitcoin than Bitcoin is to Bitcoin, blah, blah, blah. Whatever you say, your echo chamber, it okay. doesn't matter. Get boy that. If we uh, put on the table the actual use case for Monero, is just to buy drugs on the <laughs> deep web because it's completely anonymous and yeah. nobody can trace you back. But I, I told that shithead, okay, that's valid. <laughs> it's correct. But tell me how much volume there is in Monero and compare it to, uh, Bitcoin yeah. in those deep web markets. Pales and he, of course, was shut up. Yeah, okay, you can't ignore the facts. Is the thing is, and the media covers Bitcoin more than any cryptocurrency in the world. However, I do not, and saying that, I do not believe that in the near year or two, there will not be anything that replaces Bitcoin's position in the ranks of big cryptocurrency. No, I don't think so either. Um, in terms of margins and futures, that's what supports this market. It's not, it's not day-to-day trades. Um, it's BTC. This is yeah. Well, it's 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 like any other commodity, and when when I try to explain what the blockchain and what Bitcoin is to people, which I do very frequently, uh, even at my job, uh, I try to explain what data data permanence is and what that means, and why <laughs> as a commodity the blockchain has value, and not, not a lot of people get it. 
I mean, whether it's anonymous or not, data permanence is what gives cryptocurrency its value as a commodity, uh, as a digital gold, as it were. Um, yeah. E- even Saifid Dian uh, argues that, that Bitcoin is not going out there to compete with uh, Visa or MasterCard or payment processors. No, it's no. a settlement layer. It's it's more like replacing not the the central banks but the actual the but, IMF the, the the actual head of everything. Yeah, I I always tell people if if the internet were to have a baby and call it money, that's what cryptocurrency is. <laughs> and not to mention that there's Bitcoin ATMs. You don't hear of a Monero ATM or a Dogecoin ATM. Or not yet. It can happen. But we don't know. Like, what's the likelihood, though? Let's be real. Oh, it's it's yeah. likely. If the volume is there, it will be there. Uh, and even if it happens, let's say it happens, the thing is, again, as I was saying with the Monero case, uh, let's compare volumes and liquidity. At yeah. the end of the day, that's all that matters. You yes. can pull up as much, as many uh, ATMs as you want all over the world, but if they lack the actual demand from the public usage, they're useless. As easy as that. That's true. Yes, agreed. So what will it take for people to get behind privacy-centric currencies like Monero? Bah. It, it com- comes back to the point that I was making in the first show that we made. Uh, it, it boils down uh, to when they first get their privacy breached. And they can get their privacy breached by mm-hmm. using Bitcoin because if they get any portion of a Bitcoin off of a K- KYC or AML right. uh, compliant exchange, those coins or to- those UTXOs are pegged to their identity. They so are. They're wrecked. Especially and for one- US-based exchanges. Yes, because it, and you keep seeing that in the news. People that used to get drugs off of Silk Road and that shit got taken down like in 2013, 2012, mm. they keep uh, knocking on their doors and bringing people to jail because of purchases that they made years ago, seven years ago, eight years ago. So that's fucked up. That yeah. They wake up call to say, use Monero instead, bitch. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. I can't really come on this because I don't use Monero and I don't know much about Monero. Oh come on! You know you you buy uh, anal amyl nitrate off of the dark web Zipix. No, no, Prince, Prince, you got it all wrong. I buy nukes off the dark web. <laughs> <laughs> well, and now I'm gonna have to, now I'm gonna have the NSA, the CIA, and every other agency knocking on my door. I used to use <laughs> mixers, Bitcoin mixers, uh, when when I was doing dark web stuff, but even that. Is is not it leaves a trace. It does. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not. Uh, I mean, it makes it, it makes it more harder, but it doesn't make it impossible. And man, oh, yes. go ahead, go ahead, Prince. Well, no, I, I was I was saying further, like uh, you know, using Tor, and and people would use VPNs through Tor, but that kind of that that defeats the purpose of Tor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that undermines the entire setup. But exactly. What, exactly. What I was going to comment on coin joins. Uh, or Tumblr, or mixing, or whatever you call it, mm-hmm. is that they are wrong by nature because it, it and it came out with those news with Binance, by the way, because somebody was trying to deposit some coin joint UTXOs oh, and they got shit, frozen. Really? Yeah, yeah. So Binance knew that they were coin joined, so they did it. They refused them. No and, sure. and Bitcoin maximalists say, no, but coin join is enough. It's private enough. It makes Bitcoin privacy perfect. There you go. Shit. It's, it's not even, yeah. That's a, that's a strange argument. But yeah, that, 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 that's a centralized entity taking action against uh, something that, that the system has come up with as a, as a solution. It, yeah, that's terrible. Uh, and some characters say, "Well, if every single wallet of Bitcoin adopts coin joins, then everything is private." But that's completely naive. Exactly. Because there is a there is a bunch of people who bought Bitcoin like in 2012 who don't even remember, and those Bitcoin will never get moved. Or mm-hmm. if they get moved, it's going to be like 2030, 2040, when they actually want to spend those coins. Yeah. 
Once they realize, oh shit, they might be billion bought for yeah. three hundred dollars <laughs> is worth three hundred thousand. And and that's uh, to the point of speaks. Uh, that's calling for trouble because when they realize that they're billionaires or trillionaires or whatever, mm. that's exactly when you most need uh, to be fungible, to be truly private, because you don't want anybody to know that you have thousands of bitcoins. Oh, that's yeah. like, oh, saying, come, raid my ass. Psst. Yeah. That's actually a really good point. Yeah. I mean, so really, people don't think about that. If saying that, then you do want to so low. Okay, not, <laughs> well, okay. yeah. But at your peril. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mixed bag, really. Do you want people to know that you have these thousands and thousands of crypto, or do you want them to know that you have maybe a couple hundred? Yeah. Um, uh, and there is a PhD uh, guy in Monero. Uh, his name is Daniel Kim. Uh, he's come forward like twice or thrice uh, in conferences. And one of his points is that um, actually the squeaky clean people are those who need Monero the most, not Bitcoin. Yes, because, because those, they don't understand what what they're up against. Yeah, because those people, the millionaires, the billionaires, the edge funds, uh you call it the CEOs, important people, not like us. <laughs> um, those okay. are the people who most need Monero because they don't need to reveal any of their transactions or actual balances in their account. Uh, and he argues that Bitcoin has become like a reputation ledger because your reputation is reliant on whom you transact with at that moment and all the prior transactions. So it's moot. Bitcoin, right. it, to make the case, Bitcoin is like a, the biggest shift coin ever and Monero is the best uh, b uh, coin ever because of that. But of course, it's all subjective and I, I hang out with Bitcoin maximalists as often as I hang out with Monero maximalists. But the point is Bitcoin that, cash maximalists. Oh hell no! <laughs> but you you gotta understand both points of view and yeah. take the most out of them. Sure. No, it's I understand both points. And actually, a Bitcoin maximalist doesn't have much difference to me as as a, a Monero maximalist. They're both in the same arena, really. Yeah. It's just yeah. that you know privacy. It, is just as important in either case. Yeah. But the whole system is extremely important. Yeah. It, it's just building... So we have to support the, each other in that case, I think. Yeah, building a parallel system in which we can transact peer-to-peer -peer without needing third parties. Yeah. So it's awesome. Yeah. Because we're trustless. putting off banks and all of that. Go ahead. Exactly. Yeah, trustless, uh, trustless ex exchanges are important, uh, whether it's anonymous currencies or decks or anything yeah. like that. I, and you can be, for instance, in, in the U.S., and um, you want to help out your friend that is like in a rogue nation like, I don't know, Iran or Iraq. Yeah. And if you try to send them money through PayPal or any bank, you can't because they, those transactions get censored. But if you yeah, use Bitcoin and, yeah. or you use Monero... Not IMF, but uh, there's that list um, in the U.S. where any specific area is red flagged immediately. So, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it, it, it doesn't... There are good and bad people everywhere. Yeah, for you know? sure. And these systems cannot decide that. They, they just... And that's how, that's how these, um, these institutions work, is by getting lucky, you know? It's like a cop. They pull somebody over with a busted taillight, and it just happens to be that they have a pound of heroin on them. You know? <laughs> yeah. Are they specific, specific there, uh, Prince? 
<laughs> that never kettle happened wine me, bro. substance. <laughs> I don't know. Pound Brand, of heroin is a lot of heroin. Can you think of a personal experience there? <laughs> no, no. I've, I've never... If I owned a pound of heroin at any one time, I'd probably be dead. But we won't, <laughs> we won't go there. <laughs> so you'll go ahead with that penile stump gangrene surgery. So, yeah. Penile stump. No. Um... What else do we have to say about crypto before I before I go into the tangents? I don't know. Just keep learning. Uh, exactly. Cryptocurrencies are about learning. Uh, people keep believing that cryptocurrencies are all about the prices and the profits or the losses that you can take, and sure. it, that's a naive take. Uh, I think through about Bitcoin and Monero and all of that, I've learned I've learned way more than any school that I could have gone through because these things can teach you economics, psychology, uh, political yeah. views, even anything. Absolutely. I, I totally agree. I mean, in, in my time from, from joining in 2012 and teaching myself basically what mining was and, and, and all of that, you know, I, I've learned quite a bit and it's tied into what, what I already knew, um, or what I went to school for. Uh, it's all relevant. Yeah. And, and it's, it's relevant stuff. If you're in the space, and if you're uh, lingering, lurking we, within the communities, you're going to see a pattern that you keep yourself uh, abreast or up to date with real important events all around the world, yeah. Because given its decentralized nature, you can uh, couple with people from all over. So yeah. I have friends now from uh, Australia, Ukraine, South America, here in the U.S., Canada, uh, Latvia. We even have Kate uh, from South Africa. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, it. The uh, crypto has been a, a great. I don't know. What's what's the I, word? I for don't. It? I don't think Andreas Antonopoulos named his uh, the the whole book that has all his talks uh, written uh, the Internet of Money just because it's actually the Internet of Money. It's mm. like survive. It's exactly, like yeah. re- bringing back the Internet in the eighties or nineties, but right now. Yeah, it goes back to what I said earlier. Like, if, if the internet, if the World Wide Web had a baby and called it money, that's what It'd blockchain is. Yeah, it's crypto. Yeah. It's like reborn. Um, it, people don't understand how important the decentralized nature of, of, of cryptocurrency is. Uh, how it makes us all responsible for for the data that that we submit and we, you know, you can't delete. A Bitcoin. Uh, and no. That's the simplest way that I, I, I try to explain, uh, explain <laughs> to people. You know, it's... Uh, and actually, this goes into um, the bridging that, that we're doing... Well, that Bill and uh, Holiest are doing uh, on IRC right now. Uh, I call it endless bridging. Um, because... Essentially, what bridging every single collaboration platform does is it forces people to to be responsible for the information that they they transfer over these platforms because you cannot delete it once it goes over the bridge. And because uh, I see people editing shit all the time, deleting shit, you know, just try to take back. And I've made mistakes too. Uh, that. But I will own up to them. I'm not just going to fucking delete what I said, you know? Like, it's just, that's what pisses me off with these Discord people. Like, they're just in this disposable atmosphere, you know? Yeah. But yeah. endless bridging, I think, is kind of a decentralized nature of these collab- uh, collaboration platforms. Once we bridge them all, uh, there will be no more platform dominance. It's a fair point. Yeah. Yes. And I didn't understand. I mean, like when when Bill and and Holius were doing this, I was like, "Well, what's the point?" And then I thought about it. 
you know. Why not? Yeah, I think it's important. It really is. And they're looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm trying to tell them, like, this is important to communication, blah, 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 responsibility, data. But it's true. I think it really is. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Penile stump. <laughs> Moving on to something more serious. More well, I, I think we were in the serious spectrum, and now we're into the vanilla spectrum, so yes, to speak. Yes, 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 <laughs> It's all gravy, my friend. So, yeah, we, we were talking about cryptocurrency and decentralization and, and that whole atmosphere. But, you know, as, as a broadcaster, I'm, I'm realizing that not everybody is in on the same page as, as, as uh, Zipix. Rotten Socks and I. So, we'll talk about some... Penis. Some more relatable subjects. <laughs> talk about penis. <laughs> like penis. Penis and vagina. So, <clears throat> let me clear my throat. <clears> throat> so, um, in news... A South Australian man was left with a penile stump after doctors removed tissue infected with gangrene from his penis. Oh, boy. Jesus Christ. What type of news outlet do you visit? What the... <laughs> the <Empire. laughs> Listen, my sources are... Confidential. Confidential. <laughs> <laughs> the answer. <laughs> so... This uh, 43 year old was receiving a dialysis treatments, so he was getting his blood recycled um, for end stage kidney failure when doctors discovered gangrene on the tip of his dick during wow. the examination. I'm like wondering how he got gangrene on his dick. His, his flesh had already started to show serious signs of the deep infection turning black with white spots. Okay. Yo. That's not heartbeat, bro. It's gangrene. <laughs> Man. I always wanted a spotted penis. So, um, initially, only the tip of the dude's penis was removed, but after further examination, doctors had to remove more of it to ensure the gangrene wouldn't spread further. So he's got a stump. Poor guy. Poor guy. How's he gonna man. have babies? Shit. This is a depressing story. A lot and scary and cringe. I know. Uh, what it's the hell? Totally Welcome cringe, to man. Like I'm the cringe fucking lord, and this is cringe even for me. <laughs> yeah, this is normal for me. Oh. <laughs> so. The gangrene-infected skin was removed, but the man still underwent further surgery a year fucking later due, due to calciphylactis, calciphylactis that developed in his lower intestine. Man, this guy is the okay. unluckiest... Oh, so, wait, was this the year of fucking or a year fucking later? Okay. Por qué? <laughs> well, did he, was, he, was he having sex for a year straight and then he, he, he had the surgery or I don't know it doesn't really go into um, how did he get the gangrene did he did he just have too much I want to know and did he now? get gangrene from fucking too much I'm going to ask I don't, Jeeves. Know. I don't know let's find out Prince bend over oh <laughs> whoa baby <laughs> Baby. Oh, I forgot to tell you, Hugh. Okay, cases of uh, penile calciphylaxis are notoriously difficult to treat, resulting in a 64% mortality rate for those who contract it. You know, I'd search for how you contract penile calciphylaxis. <laughs> Do you really want that your research history? But yeah, I, I don't want to. I don't want to. Okay, duck, duck, go. Here we go. <laughs> I, that won't work. You're gonna need some tour for that. I need some tour for the penile calciphylaxis. Man, 
If I were your ISP, I would oh my be God, this is your door. Holy what? shit. What? Oh, my God. What'd you look up? Look Kern up Medical. Penile calciphylactus. Oh, yeah. Calciphylaxis. This is probably the worst picture that I've ever seen in the world. Oh, God. You're looking at pictures? Post it. It, it, was a, it was a PDF. And I thought it was just going to explain to me what it was. Hold on. Hold on. I'm opening it. Oh, God. I probably should do this in a private tab. Oh, well. Oh, well. Oh, man, man, that... That looks terrible. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, my... Oh, oh. I am scarred for life. Oh, oh. I, I advise anyone who does not have these not, links to not... Not, say for words. not Google this <laughs> and do not... Do not seek it out in any way. <laughs> Zipix is giving the warning. <laughs> Do not visit the Kern medical site or do not visit <laughs> Google Images. <laughs> Look at Grimmy. Grimmy is not safe for anywhere. <laughs> I think people, pe- <laughs> people are programmed backwards nowadays. You should have <laughs> said, go visit it. Go visit so they it now don't. and they won't. <laughs> yeah. yeah, go visit it. I dare you. <laughs> go- <laughs> don't need to see it. Uh, <laughs> anyways... Mistral Moving on point. from that. Let's go to see Mistral. Okay, Can we Mistral talk about, like, puppies? <laughs> hey, let's, hey, let's talk about this couple that called 911 on their Roomba. Oh, wait, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, so a North Carolina couple was watching a movie in their bedroom, and they heard loud noises coming from downstairs. So they thought it was an intruder. So oh. they called 911. So the couple waited for the police to arrive, hoping that their two-year-old daughter sleeping in her room wouldn't get up to check up on the noise. So, as one of the, the husband was armed and prepared to use his military training. If things turn yourself turn. up. I can barely hear I, you. I'm as loud as I can be. Okay. That's fine. Uh, and then he's like, I started analyzing the path that intruder would take, the line of fire, <laughs> <laughs> certain ways where we could where we could decrease our risk of getting hurt. And then minutes after they called 911, the police entered the home and began the search for an intruder. When the 911 operator told the husband to go downstairs to talk to police, the officers asked just to have one question. Is this Roomba yours? Is this Roomba yours? <laughs> police had apprehended the suspect, the couple's brand new robot robotic vacuum. He said, and then the husband said an evasive exposed, so the vacuum had turned itself on in the night. And got stuck in the hallway where he's been repeatedly banging against the walls and making the sounds they heard and was thought was an intruder. Man. <laughs> and then later on, they named the uh, the Roomba Harry after the bandit from Home Alone 2. Sweet. That's actually pretty cool. I like uh, that story. <laughs> so, if you own a Roomba... <laughs> Don't call 911. Don't call 911 until you fucking make sure that your intruder is not your floor, cle- <laughs> floor cleaning robot. <laughs> I don't know. It could be stealing some stuff. It could. It's stealing your quarters and pennies. I mean, if you leave, like, cocaine all over the floor, it could be, like, fucking ripping you off. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I wonder how much that happens daily with drug dealers. Oh, man, they yeah. Call, I wonder how many Roombas get shot up because they're stealing the drugs. Like motherfucker, you ripped me off again, Roomba. <laughs> how does that, how does that work with the cartels? Does the cartels put like yo cartels don't use Roombas, man. They no, just like employ that's... like twelve year old boys to sweep no, their shit. No, they they probably use Roombas, man. I mean, they probably got a Roomba for each room, you know. And then they all name them Pablo Escobar, and <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, when they get ripped off, I guess they just call out. Uh, Jesus to come clean it up. Jesus! That's racist, bro. <laughs> I can't think of any better names, okay? <laughs> okay, well. Probably <clears throat> Jesus. <laughs> moving on. That was an interesting Roomba story, and um, I don't own own a Roomba. Neither do I. Cause I, I. It's better than that penile one. Oh, it's definitely better than the penis one. That, that was disturbing. 
I can Fuck him, you know. I, 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 I can go to sleep now that I've heard that. Yeah. So here's an interesting article. What happens to your body when you drink gasoline? I was wondering about this. I was totally I've hoping I always could. wondered this. I used to huff uh, I, I, gas I, I, with, with man, when I was like twelve years old, me and these I two think, girls I think we would huff gas when from the from uh, when you're at the gas station. I mean come on, who doesn't? No, we would huff gas to get fucked up and get the wow no. wows. No. I was a bad kid. You know, I just wanted to get a glass of gasoline and, you know, just sip on it instead of, you know, some... I've never drank it. I don't know. You're you're, know. you're more advanced than I am. I haven't done that either. Rotten. I, 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 Rotten probably has. Rotten. No, Rotten. no. Not really. Uh, you you <clears> never <throat> been there? No. Hell no. Uh, no okay, well, I puffed fun. gas as, as a kid. I'm, I'm fucked up. It killed millions of my brain cells, and, and now <laughs> I, I probably could be a fucking professor... But no, you can't be a professor unless it was about huffing gas. It's because I huff gas. That's the reason I'm not a goddamn professor. Yeah, that's right. Yep. yep yes. Okay. Anyways, right. we'll go fast. so apparently people are asking the question, "What happens to your body when you drink gasoline?" Or somebody's answering the question that nobody's asked. I, I don't know the fucking. I'm pretty sure everybody's asked this. Yes. So the article starts. Everybody has big events in their lives that uh, deserve celebration, being uh, be it a wedding, a birthday, or a, cr- <laughs> a christening. Um, is long been a tradition to pour a tall champagne flute full of high test gasoline. <laughs> Who the fuck does this? <laughs> raise one, raise one's glass to good fortune and sip on unleaded into the wee hours. Of the morning before promptly dying. Wait, is Happy this a, New Year's? Is this a satire site? I'm uh, lost I, here. I can't I tell the don't difference think anymore. So. I don't think this is satire. Hold on, I'll look. Keep the reading tru- it, I'll look. I'm, I'm looking at this site. Um, the truth behind Leonard Skinner's plane crash. Um, I, I'm trying to so figure no, out if it's like a, a, a satire it's site. Like, it's not satire, it's just like weird crap. According to They're About Us, it's a real news site. It's okay. It's like weird stuff. Well, I'll move on then. <laughs> As it turns out, the custom may be... I, I don't know who the fuck has that custom, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but, Apparently these people. Yeah. Must be like uh, Chechens or something. I don't know. While a delicious treat for most cars. Oh, I thought I was going to say for most people. I was like, what? <laughs> so gas gasoline while a uh, delicious treat for most cars is highly toxic to the human body Damn. Um, according to medical news today there is an account of gas being made up of a whole heap of hydrocarbons which can badly this is damage on the organs and disrupt the, the central nervous system this is a weird fucking article. I no, this is true though. This is true. Ingesting just a half an ounce of this stuff can uh, of gas can be fatal to a child. Sure, that's logical. I'm not gonna feed gas to the kid. Oh, uh, you're not supposed to do that. No, I mean I tried that once. I mean shit. <laughs> Feeding gas to kids is bad, man. Shit. Oh, so I shouldn't have given him a whole gallon. Adults, though, are made of stronger stuff and will usually experience <laughs> severe intoxication from, uh, what is that, an ounce of gas? So what? if you I drink an ounce of gasoline, you're going to get fucked up. Yeah. If you're looking okay. for, like, a good, ways a to get high, game. drink an ounce of gas. <laughs> All right. Hey, and you don't have to be 21 either. No. Nope. <laughs> you just go... Get an ounce of Pretty gas for like a dollar eighteen or dollar seventy five. You have to, you have to be real precise. Bring your measuring cup. Man, this is weird. <laughs> Am I awake? No, probably not. Do you so, drink some? In the meantime, they'll experience vomiting, heartburn, drowsiness, vertigo, slurred speech, flushing of the face, staggering, weakness, blurred vision, confusion, convulsions, loss of consciousness. Lung and internal organ <laughs> hemorrhaging, and finally, heart failure. What? But you'll be high. Finally. 
Wow. What a fucking weird article. The things that I picked. Yeah, weird article. No, this is tame. The we, things we, that we I picked. remind you of the penis article? Well, that's one of many. This one's weirder than the penis article, honestly, if you ask me. Uh, I don't know. I'd rather, drink, I'd rather talk about drinking gasoline than talking about... Me too. That bad. gangrenous penis was... Mm, yum. Was bad. Fuck. Anyways, oh, anything to add to that wonderful story, guys? Yeah, everybody, go out into your local gas station and get some ounces of gas and feed it to your children. <laughs> Man, I don't endorse right? that. I endorse it. That's horrible advice. I, you didn't say You're a terrible advice. person. I know. That's wow. why I'm on here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I, I got a couple of uh, suggestions uh, for topics. Uh, why don't we talk about movies, maybe? Or sure. the other suggestion is, uh, why don't we talk about guns? Guns. Ooh, we talk about oh, guns. boy. <laughs> I mean, we've already gone this far. Let's go even farther, Prince. Wow. <laughs> guns, God, and government. Bang, bang, bang. Well, we we can talk about those two things briefly. Doesn't matter. Um, well, are you? Let's talk about guns. Are you in or against? Are you pro or against guns? I'm in between. How I'm about you? For Prince? guns, for responsible gun users. Okay. Uh, I'm in between with the fact it depends on what, who, and why. I agree, but I'm 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 putting a blanket term uh, as as to responsible gun users uh, as a replacement for the who, what, and why. I th- I don't think it needs to be responsible. I think it depends on the who, what, and why. Well, I mean, being responsible is a plus. In all not. honesty, the original use for uh, the original justification. In, in the United States for the bearing of arms is becoming more and more relevant as time goes on. Um, that well-armed militia argument, it seems like the citizens are, as time goes on, are, are in need of a well-armed militia. Okay, I can argue that, though, because I'm not, I can't go into details because that will give away my location. But some uh, at a mall nearby to me, uh, we had a guy with a Floyd card, which for you guys that don't know that is like a concealed carry permit, mm-hmm. and he opened fire in a mall parking lot near me. And luckily, it didn't hit anybody because they assume he shot it in the air, but they're not exactly sure what happened. And he, and the fact that he was he was legally allowed to carry a gun, and it was, and they don't know if it was his gun or not, but. So the fact that he was legally allowed to carry a gun doesn't prove that uh, everybody should have the right to carry. Because even the people that legally do have the right to carry... Well, I'm not arguing I, that at all. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm for common sense gun regulation. Um, I, I would be in favor of, of background checks. I mean, someone with, oh, yeah, with no, no, a no. history of mental issues should not be able to but legally purchase no, a gun. As far as as far as the news story reports, at least there was no mental history. There was no physical history. There there was nothing. It's just he decided one day he was going to go shoot up a small parking lot. Then you can't look at that that particular. Um, situation as as uh, but yes, but even I'm I'm just saying even if they are responsible, they still have the potential to do damage that's not your irres- that's irres- anyone irres- has that potential. Yeah, in my I, opinion, I, 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 and that's whether why whether I you have a gun or not. That's why I say why, who, and why, or uh, who, what, and why. I mean. You know, you have to look at it uh, statistically, okay? It's it's kind of the same way the FDA approves drugs, however uh, terrible it may be. Um, the FDA is not a good example, but uh, I'm just saying that, let's say, in the case of birth control, 
there there was a well this is just a loose example there was this medication called Yaz that was released in in the early 2000s and um it was bought up by everybody so millions of people used it after um after it was uh, on the market for, se- for for several years um it was turning out that several people developed blood clots um other maladies that were terrible and in the scope of how many people actually had uh, or had been prescribed this medication the percentage of people who developed maladies was very small so statistically it did not necessarily it wasn't relevant in the fact that i mean it was maybe like a, a 1% but still when it comes to people doing that or or people dying then um i guess it does matter but when it comes to guns does do a few maladjusted actors do they justify um, I, i'm trying to think of the word here i'm sorry i'm trying to place my words carefully does that justify a change in in the way that the laws are perceived. Yes no. and no. Yes I and think, no. I think it depends on how the laws are changed and if there can be a mutual agreement between both sides in the law made. I think yeah, a mutual agreement between both sides is is important. But and I do believe that this small number does in fact, warrant it. Yeah. But isn't the Second Amendment of the Constitution the right to bear arms? The it right. is, but it does not state in the Constitution, however, that the law cannot amend... We can amend that constitutional right at any point, which is what they would have to do to change the gun laws. Yeah, and just... Uh, just for the record, the reason I brought up this topic is because um, I believe uh, it should be uh, approached or embraced the fact that there is 3D gun printed now because these stupid asses uh, want to I- impose gun control and every time anybody gets a gun or a weapon off of a market it has a serial whereas mm. when you print your own gun at your place with a basic cheap I'm getting everybody uh, up in lo- up, up in arms here on uh, on real liberty media uh maladies I was referring I was trying to be nice and and uh and not offensive to people with mental uh mental issues I mean you know I'm bipolar myself uh, and yes, those are maladies. Um, you know, uh, that's what I was referring to. Not like the flu or or the measles. Um, if you guys want to to take that road, um, but yeah. Anyways, uh, go on. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. Um, no, I was just saying that there is now 3D uh, gun printing, and that uh, I believe. If we approach guns as uh, a thing of self-defense, uh, it, it should be embraced. It should be, uh, at, at the very least, uh, take a look at it and learn from it and have some uh, background knowledge, whether you are pro or against, it doesn't matter. But sure. the more you know, it, the, the better. Um, you know, the... I don't think it has anything to do with with gun rights. The fact that uh, it has to do with our society and the way that it treats certain certain classes, certain uh, deficiencies. Um, it's this golden rut. People are unhappy. They're going to act out. It's not the guns. It's the it's 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 the system that is the problem. 
And yeah. uh, I don't know. People just don't seem to make the link. You know, the the whole opioid crisis, um, everything, you know, uh, gun violence, everything. It's not it's not related to those issues themselves. It's related to our entire system. For sure. It's, they're looking at the, uh, at the disease, but they're not looking at the causation. Exactly. Uh, and that's very fucked up because they, they, they cannot think, uh, above their horizons and they make, uh, strong opinions or strong, uh, judgmental statements regarding anybody that they don't even know. Because they have so an it's agenda. fucked up. Yeah. Fuck them. <laughs> they have a separate agenda, and and that agenda is not to solve the ultimate problem. Uh, and uh, and I'm not saying if if they I'm not saying that there should be strict gun controls to where you have to go through this 20 step process either. I'm saying that they need to show that. At least in a decently defined future, that they're not going to have some mental break or you know, like I don't I mean, know if I know anyone can prove that. I know that's not Honestly. easy to tell, but at the same time, there's got to be something done because if I hear about another church shooting or you well, know, that gets into sh- whether whether these shootings are false flags or not, also uh, because man. I don't know what to believe these days. You can right? create conspiracies over that, for yeah. sure. But I, I don't care if they're false flags or not. They're still shooting, and innocent people are still getting hurt. This yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I was going to add to see whoever... You're, the fix? Yeah, yeah, do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't even remember what I was going to say now. Um, hold on. <laughs> Keep going. Then I'll, I'll come back to it. Well... Yeah. Oh yeah, I got it. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Go for it. Uh, you were saying that there is no background check uh, regarding mental uh, well-being, and that's completely accurate because I know somebody else uh, who got their fight, as you were mentioning it, and there is not a single mental like thing. Like you go talk to a psychology people or somebody that actually talks to you and make sure that you're not depressed or sure. that you're not bipolar or whatever. Uh, and that should be added into that. But then we need to factor in how much does that cost to the government and how much th- does that cost to the citizen that pays the taxes. So it's a two-sided coin. Yeah. For sure, I'm, uh, I'm saying that it should be added, but how much does that cost? And, it and even will if it that is implemented, it would not be a blanket solution. I mean, there yeah. are there's still going to be people who who slip through the cracks. There's, We're still going to have that. people that slip through the cracks, regardless of what we do. That's this is the given. I, I, there, it's, there needs to be something that at least helps prevent most, if not the majority, of the cra- of the well, slip throughs. Again, as I as I said. I don't think it has much to do with, with gun regulation as as it has to do with our entire system as a whole. Um, no, and I don't disagree with that. But, but I think gun control is a big part of it. It, it yeah. is, but it's it's like killing the horse to save the rider. I, I, or, I don't know. I don't know how to present that. Um, it, it's... It, trying to solve a problem by by highlighting or trying to cure cancer by by killing uh, killing grandma. I mean, sure, you kill grandma, cancer's dead. But yeah, grandma's dead too. <laughs> I mean, um, I don't know. It's a dumb analogy, but I really can't think of of, of I don't know <laughs> other ways to put I, it right I now. I just trying. Trying to weigh in on that a little bit, um, I believe it's unfair, uh, let's say tomorrow there is uh, an amendment and we void the second amendment, nobody can bear weapons anymore, let's say it's a hypothetical situation. Uh, I think it's way, way, way unfair that the citizens couldn't uh, bear weapons, whereas all the army, all the marines, everyone involved with the government authorities can reach 
uh, AR-15 and AK-47. It's it's completely asymmetrical because it, they become like our master and we are their slaves. Um, and my shilling point is to get into 3D uh, gun printing because if you print your own thing, they cannot know that you own a weapon. Yeah. Well, then make yeah, three gun, gun printing is, is is interesting. Yeah, that's for sure. I, I don't think they could because it, the cat is well out of the back. Uh, the three D uh, printers are out there. I fear if you're caught with a three D no, that's a, uh, what you could tell easily by their lack of a serial number or a lack of registered serial numbers. Then it's yeah. legal, and you should have that gun confiscated. So Grimnir posted a link here in, in Real Liberty Media chat. Uh, background checks are gun confiscation. Yes. Good. Exactly. That's what they are for the a point. certain number of people, not for everybody. Um, but, and then, Rusko, when you say never... You know, that, doctor, that's a, a very wide term. I mean, uh, what background checks could mean. But uh, essentially, yes, that's what, exactly what they're meant to do. Not to... Prohibit gun rights from everyone. And Miss Girl, when you say you never trust a doctor, okay, I'm sorry, but when you have dying and have a heart attack, who do you want us to trust? I'm gonna trust the uh, uh, Kellogg's. Yeah, or I'm gonna go just down a whole thing of Kellogg's and hope I'm not gonna die after a heart attack. Word, cornflakes. <laughs> I don't know. It, 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 so be careful what you say there, Miss Girl. Yeah. Anyways, I'm all lost. When did we talk about any doctor? What the fuck? Is no, going on here? no we're, we're <laughs> real living media chat, stuff. my friend. Oh, okay, okay, okay. They're, they're responding the to us talking. Okay, and, okay. Uh, I'm, I, I'm I'm happy to bring a topic uh, which is welcoming the platform that host us because I know that they're no, pro they're, or anti guns. Oh no, cool. no, we're we're cool. We're cool. This is all uh, uh, good. It's, it's, Good, good discourse topic. for anybody who is into Bitcoin. For the record, nobody pay me for do for doing this. It's just that I actually appreciate the content. There is a new podcast called Guns and Bitcoin. Oh yeah, and and it's awesome, man. It the, the actual episodes, the contents, the actual people that they interview, the the points that they treat in their agenda, the actual hats, the the. Of course, again, nobody pay me to do this speech. Uh, it's awesome. I, I because they bring out a lot of controversial characters who, who are into the three D gun printing world, the Bitcoin world. So it's like bending, blending, uh, bringing together these two worlds, and it's awesome because they they argue if you're bringing your finances uh, into that uh, Swiss. A bank that is Bitcoin, how right. are you going to defend it? Stay alive, stay alive. That's a good point. You know, it, it's a very, it's a multifaceted issue. Uh, you know, with, with, uh, let me just, because uh, Grimnir is actually, uh, he said, read the article. And, and you know, I, I did browse it, but obviously I'm, I'm broadcasting. Read it, attention right? is not 100%. So, I, I will get into this article right here because we're, we're talking about it. So, uh, the article. Um, if you support background checks for gun or ammunition pur purchases, you are supporting a gun ban, which will eventually lead to your right to self-defense being taken from you. Okay, I, I can get behind that. It, you know, things obviously, legis uh, legislation-wise, are, are often a path to that, yes. Um it seems, well, this is an opinion. It seems most people are okay with preventing felons uh, and the menti mentally unstable from owning weapons. And yeah, that, that, that's generally. Yeah, yeah felons definitely so, should not have any guns. Yeah. Um, They're in prison for a reason. Well, uh, felonies are a different, uh, different horse of a different color altogether because, you know, there are violent felonies and there, there are nonviolent felonies. Well, like, there are finan sure. like, if you see someone who's in a financial crime that gets a felony because they did whatever, uh, who the fuck cares whether they have a 
gun or not, really. Okay, but they're you just in that think same boat. What, what what did they do in prison though? That's the clue you got to think about. What does anybody do in prison? They eat fucking ramen and they they chill. <laughs> no, they end up joining gangs and. Oh all come that. on, that that's that's highly. Oh come on, bro. Don't go there. Anyway, uh, I just did. You did, but. That's not what happens when you go to prison. You don't join gangs. You don't drop the soap. You don't get ass fucked. Well, you might. Well, I you don't might. know. It, it depends on the prison that you it go depends, to. Yes, <laughs> uh, federal prisons probably not. Uh, county really? prisons mm, maybe. A state prisons for sure. <laughs> mm, state prisons yes and no. As long as you assert dominance as soon as you get there, you're fine. Princely, you'd be screwed in all the above. So, um, okay, reading on with this article, there's a huge problem with uh, that kind of thinking uh, in that the state can declare anything you do as a reason to place you into one of those categories. And yes, I I agree there can be some misrepresentation, but as it is, how can you delineate that? Uh, And it says, if you don't blindly agree and believe with everything the government says, you, you... declared uh, mentally unstable that's uh, that's neither here nor there I mean I totally agree with that it's it's a path to something else and it could be it could be nefarious but man it's like uh, I don't know what to say really I mean I don't trust the government obviously and and I I believe in in the right to uh, self defense, obviously, and and tyranny. But I think there's a line that needs to be drawn, whether or as to what's useful in that that regard. And uh, you know, it, and I understand what this article is saying. Like, if you open the door, you, you're you're, you're basically saying that eventually this is going to happen to, to, to everybody. But um, in a lot of ways, it's paranoia as well. But it's not unwarranted. Don't get me wrong. Because shit, look, look, look what's happened so far. Um, yep. <laughs> well, uh I don't know if we should keep talking. We've been talking well, for more than an hour. Yeah, I recon. Yeah, we're, so. we're about to we're about to wrap up. I just wanted to. Let's uh, let's do an asshole of the week. Oh, asshole of the week. Who's gonna be the asshole of the week? I, mean, oh. I don't have the music queued up or anything. Oh, okay. So we're not gonna do the music. Okay. I mean, I could queue it up. I so do you. I I have one in mind. Okay. Well, give me one second. And uh, keep them occupied, my friend. Uh, keeping them occupied. Uh, talk about your <laughs> talk about your large penis. Oh yeah, it's so large. It's larger than Prince, guys. If you want to see it, just uh, scroll up. You'll see this picture on a PDF. <laughs> 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 That's what it looks like after using Prince. Oh shit. Well, <laughs> hold on. Okay. Well. Okay. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, my friend. Before we leave you, we're gonna leave you with the asshole of the week. That's what this music represents. Is it? Yes. It's just something. You're a winner! Winner, winner, chicken dinner. You're the F are sports one and the dog queen, dog queen, dev team. Okay. That's the end Oh, of the my dear lord. This is so neat. Nobody will get it. Nobody will. I, I don't so, care. Who is the asshole of the week, my friend? Sportland and the Dev. Do- do- oh, Sportland! Oh, poor Sportland. 
Oh, oh there go, there, there's more to it than you guys both know. I well, got the four one. I got the complete four one one. Oh boy, we got to get into this because this is important to to, to us cryptocurrency folk oh and Dogecoin God. folk. So, um, TLDR. Sportsman has a vote in of shutting down the Dogecoin IRC channel. Boo! Yeah. Um, basically, here is verbatim of what she said. Or at least part of what she said. A free note has all separate channels for projects and on top of channels. This is not the environment we created nor a system we created. We simply worked with it. <laughs> there is a lot of history I think you miss out on. Promise. I am not wanting the channel to die or be killed. Bull crap. But I want to kill I'll it anyways. I'll tell I'll tell I'll tell you what she said before this. And here's what she says continuing on. I would much rather it exist without the ties to be free to be itself, where it is left to be all of itself. But what? later but here's what she says earlier. Believe me, my vote in all of this now has to rip the IRC off the project stuff. Redirect to another channel and just be d- be done with it. Wow. So she just contradicted herself because totally. later, yeah, because she just got done saying the after that after she said what I just said about her wanting to rip it off. That's when she says the first line I read. Jesus, Sporkling, I mean, that's, like shit, girl. And then she told me this in a PM when I asked her what's going on. Yo, you got to stop sm- smoking the crack, girl. I, I chill. I, so I get what Bill was ticked off on. Me now, too. I honestly, he wants the channel to stay, but Sporkland's being a neo-Nazi here and wanting to just take over and make everything about Dogecoin. We can't. That's why when I I, I started getting ticked off and I just started saying, "Oh, we can only talk about Dogecoin here. No off-topic chatter." Because you know the Elderlords <sighs> want us to talk about this certain thing. Man. No, I know Rotten. Rotten's got a specific opinion on Dogecoin, but uh, on on quote uh, on, on hashtag Dogecoin Dogecoin RC. But hey, man, you know, I guess I I get it. It's it's meant to be what it is. And but when you get they- when you walk into somebody's house, you're you're, you're you know. You're, you're I just don't think she understands. No, she them. doesn't. We're the reason they didn't exist. No. Not at all. I'm sorry, think- Sporklin. You are definitely our asshole of the week. <laughs> if oh, you want to refute the it, dev, the dev team. The entire dev team. Is so, the, so this is the entire Dogecoin dev team. Yeah, because they're the ones that control the IRC count. She's Wait, well, she. I mean, we had Eminem uh, come back today and, and start talking to us. Like, um, we're basically. Cool. Here, here's how this works. Spork one seems to be the one that seems to be the, the main minority control, and then the then the rest of the Dogecoin dev team has the rest of the control, and then Freenode on top of that has control of the channel, hmm. and it's just a whole mess between everybody, and then. Nobody tells anybody about anything, and so then it gets drawn out, and then it ends up into this mess that we're in now. It's pretty much a fucking kindergarten, because they keep <laughs> fighting back and forth with each other, but at the end of the day, who, uh, who makes the calls, it's neither. It's free now the staff. Yeah. They can see anything they fucking want and do whatever the fuck they There's want. No. But once, a- once they kick in, they can... K line everybody and everybody gets no, no, fucked, no. including Bill. It's, no. it's pointless. No, you got this. Word. It's actually not even free note staff. It's free note staff getting involved because of sport club. Exactly, Jeez. because they keep seeing that they were so dramatic pieces of shit, and she, she always tries to bring up battles out of nowhere. Because I, I mean, she's a fucking attention hard. That's what's that funny, man. Is. What's really funny about this is 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 that Dogecoin is is probably the the safest space in yeah, the crypto yeah. space on 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 Freenode, and then we have these rooms like Politics Uncensored, and uh, what's I mean, I like to say that we're pretty well behaved. Exactly. I mean, shit, we get it online, we joke, but shit, it's it's we know it's the limit. A, what's the point? I mean, if you want to really like be be like out of line, come to fucking Holy Roger room. We're cool. But, no, no. 
no, if you want to talk about places that should have been shut down, if you guys, I don't know if you guys were in the New Year's room for Freenode, but that place, if that place, if any IRC channel should be shut down by Freenode. Oh, man, I don't know. Man, it, it, we don't see that maybe too often. It depends on how uh, where you are in Freenode, but there mm. is certain channels to add to the point that he is saying. There's some real toxic there is, ones. Yeah, there, there is actually, and I, I sometimes I admit I'm toxic or I spew some racial slurs or I'm yeah. controversial. I'm like the Alex Jones of Monero, whatever. But there is some actual people who get fucked up on the heroin or something and post a lot of garbage. But it's 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 harmful. It's it's bad. Oh yeah, I agree totally. I mean, there's some serious toxic stuff, and it, it's Oof. spilled over into the Holy Roger at certain times because we we aligned with the Truth Room and uh, Politics Uncensored and the uh, Econometrics Room, and man, there's some fucking terrible people in those three rooms, uh, as I'm sure all of you guys. So know. I just I just don't <laughs> understand what the big deal is. We're definitely not at that level. No. Not at all. That's why I. That's why I'm mentioning those. I mean, I mean, there's only like what four channel ops, and we and I we I hardly do anything. It's yeah, I mean, me banning rotten socks. I've asked her bot ops <laughs> several times there. I don't know. Well, maybe, maybe whatever. They, they won't give me bot ops because I'll just uh, I'll unban rotten every time it gets banned. No, yeah, that's, that's okay, Prince. I just ban you for it anyway. Oh. Burn. In, any, in any case, kids, let's you close the night yeah. here. Yeah, we're going to close. Uh, so yeah. we, we, we extended because we wanted to talk about the ass all the week and, and free node and, and the politics there. But uh, happy, free happy 2020 and shit, motherfuckers. <laughs> we'll yeah. be back next week. Yeah, whoever wants to join us, we're at Dogecoin on Freenode or the Holy Roger or at, at, uh, pardon me, uh, hashtag, hashtag, altcoins, uh, mm. I'm not there. Wow, well, fuck you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Have Burn. a great night, everybody. <laughs> Have a good night, my friends. Thank you for tuning in to this bye -bye. brand new Power Hour. And, Is uh, this thing on? Is this thing on? <laughs> so thank you. Good night. As the music plays. I'm prostitute. Yeah, we already know. See how the one